Hey there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own conversational AI agent using Pipecat and Speechmatics. And as an extra treat, I'll show you some cool features the Speechmatics API has that lets you differentiate between speakers. So you can do things like what we did in the recent demo, where myself and my colleague Sam played a game of Guess Who with our AI agent named Humphrey. So all good conversational agents have at least three main features to them, a way to listen, a way to think, and a way to speak. So in this project, we're going to be using Cartesia as our text-to-speech, OpenAI as our brains, our natural language processing engine, and Speechmatics as our speech-to-text or our transcription feature. And all of this is going to be coordinated using an open source orchestration framework called Pipecat. And it's a very intuitive way to actually generate or well, develop these conversational AI agents because it features a very particular architecture called pipeline. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. So to speak to that briefly, what makes this pipeline architecture so special is that it's a very intuitive way of actually organizing all these asynchronous uh, features and functions. So including, well, including your uh, transcription, your end of utterance detection, your asynchronous interruption handling, all this stuff is abstracted out in the framework. And you can actually just linearly sequence I want the transcription output to feed into my large language model, to feed into a text-to-speech, and in between I want a function call, and then I want it to do some additional kind of like cross-checking before it gives an answer. You can really make it as simple or as complicated as you like. And that's what's wonderful about this. In this project, we're actually going to start with the most simple form and then kind of build up our understanding from there, leading up to that example I mentioned earlier where you can effectively play a game of Guess Who with your AI agent. So. Without further ado, let's get into it. What we're going to do is we're actually going to go through Pipecat's quick start and clone their most basic project they have. I'll talk to that in a moment. And then we're actually going to build on top of this basic project to really show off some of the capabilities and features that Pipecat has. So to start, let's actually go to pipecat.ai, navigate here to the docs, and then scroll down to your quick start. Obviously lots of great information, but we're going to start with the quick start. Go through this page and copy down all the commands, create your product directory, install your environment. And what's also very important is to get a Cartesia API key. This is necessary for your text-to-speech to work. And uh, there are lots of resources online on how to do that. Once you actually work your way through that documentation, you'll be left with something like this, um, where you have a say one thing.py file. You have your requirements file, obviously, uh, and you have your environment. So like I said, in your environment, you're going to want a Cartesia API key. If you want to be ahead of the game, also uh, collect a Speechmatics API key for your transcription and an open AI API key for your logic. But for now, we need a Cartesia API key. Just to contextualize everything, just to show off what exactly this project does, I'm going to run it. So what you'll see is it will spin up a web instance using UVCorn, and it looks like this. And what will happen is you hit connect and the AI agent will join. Hello there. It will say hello and then it will leave. And that's all it does as a name I suggest, say one thing. So basically, what's doing that? How does this work exactly? So let's look through the code more specifically. Uh, we have this uh, parameter that sits outside of our main function called transport params. The important thing to know about transport is transport effectively is uh, Pipecat's way of interacting with the outside world. So it handles what comes in and what goes out of the actual uh, AI agent instance. Um, in this case, we're going to be using WebRTC to handle that uh, input-output service. And then we have some parameters. This will become more important later on, so just keep that in mind. But moving on, uh, we have our main uh, asynchronous function definition called run example. And basically, let's talk through each component. We have logger, that's just logging, you know, just uh, some debug log saying what's happening. We're instantiating a text to speech. So in this case, we're using the Cartesia text to speech service, giving it an API key, giving it a voice ID. You can change these things, of course. We then move on to task, and task is basically the instruction. Well, you can see here it actually says pipeline and then pipeline task and then pipeline. But like I said, pipeline is that sequence of functions uh, that a um, AI agent will actually run through. So at the moment, it has it's, in, it's initiating a text to speech. It's taking that output and it's actually transporting it out. And in this case, like I said, it's how it interacts with us. 
it means that it's taking the output of that text-to-speech and then actually projecting it through the speakers. Next, we have our uh, on-client connect, which is a, uh, which basically how you initiate the agent itself to join that web UI instance. And you can see here that basically what it's doing is it's queuing up what's called frames. And frames are like little packages, self-contained packages. Uh, for example, your text-to-speech would be a frame, or your speech-to-text, or your LLM. Each of those would be individual frames. In this example, explicitly, we're calling a frame called text-to-speech speak frame, and we're giving it the prompt hello there, and then we're ending the frame. And what ending the frame in this context means is that we're ending the conversation. So you can actually add several text-to-speech frames if you'd like. In sequence, you can change the text, you can do whatever you'd like here, and then it would follow that same sequence. Then you have some boilerplate here, some runner and uh, runner dot run task, and this is just to actually initiate and then eventually run this in in a in a uh, conversational loop. That's an overview of how all this works, and what we're going to do now is we're actually going to take it one step further. Instead of the AI agent joining and then leaving, we're going to have the AI agent join and then engage in a conversation with us. So how are we going to do that? So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually just uh, set kind of a benchmark to work against. So focusing on this pipeline task over here, I'm going to set what this is going to look like as a final product. So we're going to actually build on top of it. So instead of it just being a text-to-speech and then an output, now we have something more sophisticated where you have a transport input, in this case it would be a microphone, that feeds into an STT service, a speech-to-text service, the output of that speech of text gets put into something called a context aggregator, which I'll explain in a moment. The output of that goes into the large language model. The output of the large language model goes to the text to speech. This then comes out of the microphone and then the context aggregator, and again, I'll talk about that in a moment, gets updated and then you would follow that in a loop. So this is what we're going to build. And maybe now you're getting a sense of how the sequence actually does form the basis of a conversational agent. So let's start building it up. But there is something very, very important that you need to first do. And that is actually going up to our transport parameters. So we're using WebRTC, but initially all it specified was that we're looking for audio out enabled. We need audio in to be enabled so you can actually start getting information through your microphone. And we need something called a VAD analyzer. So VAD stands for uh, voice audio detection, I think. Uh, and basically, it's detecting whether somebody is speaking or not. And this is critical to the interruption feature of an AI agent, right? So make sure you have those uh, parameters updated for WebRTC. And then moving on, we're now going to initiate our large language model in a similar way. We'll be using OpenAI LLM service, API key, and then some params. In this case, we're using temperature 0.75. But of course, you can calibrate this how you'd like. And then finally, we're going to use our STT, which is our Speechmatics text-to-speech service. Um, I'll show you now how to actually get a Speechmatics API key. So what we're going to want to do is go to your browser, and you want to go to speechmatics.com. Let's go to the home page. We're going to want to go to Get Started. You're going to want to sign in with your credentials. So in my case, I have, whoops, sorry, login and then sign in with your credentials. So I already have an account, as you can imagine. So let's sign in. And it'll be greeted with our portal interface. And this is where you can try a bunch of demos. You can see all the services and features of all the SpeechMax APIs. But what you want to do is go to, here in the left, Get API Key, and then create your API key. So in this case, I already have a pipe cap, but let's call it pipe cap 2. Why not? Generate API Key. And then you can see it here. I'm obviously going to delete this, so you have to generate your own. But once you have that, lift it, and then go into your .m file, and then copy it in place of your SpeechMax API. And that is how you get that running. So now our uh, text-to-speech, large language model, and STT are all initiated. Let's talk a bit about this context aggregator uh, concept. So basically, if you've worked with large language models before, you understand that what happens is you're building up a conversation that's uh, labeled as the user said this, the assistant said this, here's the system prompt, and as the conversation progresses, that uh, dictionary, that log, effectively builds up over time. 
this is what the context aggregator is. So it's an object that actually handles that kind of logic. And you can get an intuition for this in a moment. So what you want to do is you want to instantiate this uh, context aggregator. So that's LLM create context aggregator. And then we have context. What is context? So context uses uh, an object called OpenAI LLM context. And then we're going to create another uh, object called messages or another variable called messages. And this is a dictionary that would then specify uh, what you'd be used to in your typical uh, large language model project. So role, system, and this would be your system prompt. So in this case, our system prompt is you are a helpful assistant called Julia. Uh, so now we're going to actually update our on client connect loop. So at the moment, what's happening is that you're queuing up frames and all you're doing is running text to speech. But we have this new beautiful updated pipeline. So let's update that. We're going to append to our messages object, uh, say something short, and then it will, it will uh, say something uh, short. And then it's going to await and then queue the frames for the context aggregator and then get the current context frame. And it will actually run through that pipeline uh, loop. What's missing now is actually a function called on client disconnect. And this is just to end that loop and make sure there are no uh, asynchronous functions running uh, in the background when the conversation is already ended. Another extremely important thing. So obviously we've gone through all the functions and what they do and how they link to each other, but make sure to actually uh, import all these new things. Otherwise it will definitely not work. So now we've imported all these functions. I'm going to save that. I'm going to run this updated say one thing file and you know, fingers crossed, let's hope it works. If I go back to our UI, refresh that, hit connect. Hello, how can I help you today? Hey there, uh, what's your name and tell me a bit about yourself. Hi there, my name is Julia. I'm an AI assistant here to help you with questions, tasks, or anything you need. I love helping people find information, Any, solve problems. Anyways, uh, why don't you tell me a joke? Sure. Here's one for you. Why did the scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. <laughs> Very good. Anyways, you can see that now, actually, I'm going to disconnect so it doesn't respond. But basically now, it is a conversational loop. You can actually engage with the agent and have an indefinite conversation if you like. And that is how you move from the basic example project to this more sophisticated conversational agent. Uh, now, the next step is I want to show off some really cool speech-matic specific features that lets you identify who's speaking. And then we're going to play a game of guess who very, very quickly. Uh, so let's get into that. Something specific to speech Max, which is very, very cool, is this uh, feature called diarization, diarization is just the fancy way of saying speaker ID. So being able to determine who said what based on their voice signature uh, is very impressive. Uh, it's called diarization and we're going to enable it. So if you go to our STT instance of speechmatics, we're going to Add a variable called uh, enable speaker diarization rization equals true. So now it's enabled. But another critical um, variable that you need to add is text format. And this will make more sense later on. But basically, when you're passing the uh, transcription from the STT to the large language model, you're actually able to just label who said what by adding this prefix. So in this case, you can see um, it's adding the prefix speaker and then some kind of identifier and then the text that they actually said. So that's effectively what that means. And I can show you what that output looks like in a moment. Next, we're going to scroll down and actually update the system prompt to understand and work with this new information. So I updated it with these two additional lines. So always respond to the user in a concise, funny, creative, and helpful way. Why not? Um, and also, speaker dot 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 identifies different speakers. Do not use tags in your replies because if you don't add that extra sentence at the end, then it would speak aloud. Speaker one said this. Da, da, da. So you want it to be more natural, but you still want that um, information to be uh, available for the interpretation. And literally, that's it. That's all you have to do. And now I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to get a. <laughs> I'm going to grab one of my colleagues and we're going to play a game of guess who. I know we use that demo a lot, but it's really, really good at illustrating this point. So just give me a second. Okay, super. So this is my colleague, Min, and I'm going to show him this thing we've just built. And we're going to 
play a game of Guessy, which I, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like I said, we use this demo uh, literally all the time. <laughs> I was just really good at showing off diarization, so let's start this up. I'm going to have to give it the rules initially, yeah. and then uh, let's play a really quick game. So uh, hey, my name is Matt. Hey, my name is Min. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Matt and Min. If this were a game, you both just unlocked level one. OK, so we, we are actually going to play a game. So I want to play a game of Guess Who. And the premise of this game is basically you pick a character. Min and I will ask you questions in turn. And uh, you answer yes or no uh, as to whether you know your character has these features. And then we'll take a guess. And if we get it right, then that's, that's the game complete. Does that make sense? Crystal clear, Matt. I'm ready to be mysterious. I'll pick a character. Let the great guessing games begin. Okay. Ask away, detectives. Cool. Uh, I guess my first question is, is your character fictional or non-fictional? My character is fictional. Straight from the land of make-believe. <laughs> really, they should be yes or no questions, but I, th I think it's fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so it's fictional. Uh, are you a uh, detective? Nope. My character is not a detective. No magnifying glass or deerstalker hat here. Is your character uh, from a, a book? Yes. My character comes from a book. Pages and all. Our, uh, it is a fantasy book. Yes, indeed. My character hails from a fantasy book. Magic, mystery, <laughs> and maybe a dragon or two. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> is your character a Game of Thrones from Game of Thrones? Nope. My character is not from Game of Thrones. No Iron Throne drama here. I think I might know. Is your character from Harry Potter? That's your correct answer. Yes, my character is from Harry Potter. One's is, at the ready. Is your character Harry Potter's? Nope, not the boy who lived. Oh my goodness. What? Okay, so now we're just going to be guessing names. Are you a male? <laughs> yes, my character is male. The plot thickens like a good cauldron brew. Is your character on the good or the bad side? Yes, or oh, no questions. <laughs> is your character on the good side? Yes, my character is on the good side, fighting for team light, not dark. Are you Ron Weasley? Blue me, spot on. Hey, uh, way. Just, just to show off diarization, who guessed correctly? Gold star for speaker S1. Matt cracked the code and unmasked me as Ron Weasley. So, a great as well. so just Ten for one. just for clarity, S1 is the default tag, and it's uh, it also said Matt. So S1 is Matt. But yes, so that shows off uh, speaker diarization in a in a fun little game. Anyways, that really showed off all the how it all came together. We had interruption, we had turn taking, we had speaker identification. Again, the speaker identification thing is a speechmatic specific feature. And we'd love to see how you go about using it for whatever your use cases, use cases might be. So very cool. Let me just quickly show you exactly what that output looks like. So I'll increase my terminal window here. And you can see that obviously the conversation was quite long. It's a little bit jumbled, but you can see that speaker two is identified when they were saying stuff. Speaker one was identified. And the thing is, Although the tag speaker one, speaker two didn't update because it's a large language model, speaker one, who was me, at some point said, my name is Matt. So when I asked it near the end, who won, it made the inference uh, S1 speaker one equals Matt, Matt won the game. So very, very cool, very, very clever, lots of potential use cases there. But that wraps up this very basic walkthrough of Pipecat and setting up speechmatics and uh, yeah, the, the, the wonderful feature of uh, speaker diarization. There's also a bilingual capability, which is wonderful. If that's important to your use case, absolutely go through documentation and look through how that might work. We'd love to see what you build next. Otherwise, thank you for watching our demo. See you later.